G'day again guys and thank you for joining me. So recently I found myself wanting to draw a tiger. I've gone through and I found the reference photos, I've been planning the piece in my head and then boop, some shiny new idea pops up and I find myself drawing something completely different. Now this happens all the time. I find I am really easily distracted by new ideas. But this time I came across a post from the Coloured Pencil magazine announcing a past and present challenge. The idea being to draw something again to see how much you have grown as an artist. And what did I see at the end of that post but, oh, my poor old derpy tiger. Oh dear, this was one of the first colour pencil pieces that I created back in 2014. Now, I promise I could draw at this point, but I knew nothing about how to use my colour pencils and I was just learning about different papers and techniques and I just didn't understand how layering lightly would allow me to fix mistakes. And all of this resulted in this very stiff, very cross-eyed tiger. Next to that was a tiger that I had drawn four years later. This time I'd had a lot more practice and I was able to recreate a piece that I'm still reasonably happy with. Uh, this was actually the first piece that I drew on camera, so if you do want to see a video recording that was taped on an iPhone 4 strapped to a plank of wood, check out the first video on this channel. Now, of course, looking back, there are plenty of things that I would change on this piece. Uh, but compared to good old Derpy Tiger, I really think this is a good example of how much I had learned in that time. And after seeing that post from the Colour Pencil magazine, I did feel a little bit called out. Clearly, it must be time for me to draw this again and see what else I had learned and consider what I do differently now from when I started. The first thing I did differently was to choose a different kind of paper. Now, both of my older pieces were created on Fabriano Academia paper, which used to be a pretty good paper for colour pencils until something changed. And I started to find patches of paper that the colour pencil just wouldn't stick to. After that, I decided to only use the Archer's Hot Press watercolour paper. But recently, I've been experimenting with using more textured surfaces. Um, and this time, I chose to use a sheet of white pastel mat. Now, unlike traditional papers, this textured surface allows me to layer lighter colours over the top of darker ones, which helps so much when getting a nice fur texture. The second thing I did differently was to create an out-of-focus background using pan pastels. Now, learning about this combination was a huge game changer. Pan pastels play so nicely alongside my colour pencils, they make it really, really easy to create a blurry background and it is just so fast to cover the entire surface of the paper. Now, these days I could create the same effect using colour pencil alone. Um, I did so in this piece. Um, but it is just so fast and fun and effective to use those pan pastels that I find myself pulling those pans out more and more often. Another thing I did differently was my colour choice. In both of my older pieces, I have leaned really, really heavily on more orange toned colours for the fur. In the oldest piece, that choice led to a very unrealistic, blocky, icky colour. Um, but on the second tiger, the oranges were pretty much a deliberate choice. I thought it worked well with the white background, but compared to the older piece, it was toned down greatly by using a lot of browns and terracotta colours. I liked the way it looked, but I wanted to create a much more dramatic tone for this new tiger. So instead of leaning towards oranges on this piece, I used a lot of burnt sienna, walnut, sepia for a really rich red-brown colour to the darkest areas of his fur. And then going towards more raw umber, brown ochre and vista for the more yellow tones in his fur. And I do think that using so much more variation to the colours made for a much more interesting piece overall. Probably one of the biggest changes was my willingness to create dark, dark areas. I think it added a lot more realism and a lot more drama to this piece when I added that sepia and black around the bottom of his jaw. Four years ago, I never would have been brave enough to add anything that dark. Now, the pastel mat does make it a little bit less intimidating to add such dark areas because I know I can always lighten areas if I need to, uh, but I would have done this same thing on the watercolour paper too. Not being afraid to go dark has made a huge difference in my work over the years. Finally, these days I am deeply, deeply in love with my brush and pencil touch-up texture and titanium white mix. 
I honestly don't even know what I ever did without that stuff. It's so good, it feels like cheating, but of course we need to remember that the only way that you can ever cheat at art is to steal somebody else's work. It's just being able to add those brilliant white highlights at the end gives me so much more freedom. And it is so much easier than trying to avoid areas until the very end. Oh, love that stuff. So looking at these three images, I can clearly see a progression in my work over the past six years. This is really encouraging to me because sometimes it can feel really like you're going nowhere when you're just working from one piece to the next. Now, I don't want to send you astray. While a lot of the changes I have made in my work has been different pieces of equipment or different techniques, it has not been any one special tool or technique that has brought me this far. Instead, it has been a lot of practice, a lot of experiments, and even more mistakes that have brought me to a place that I'm reasonably happy with. But of course, the best thing, best thing about art is that you never ever stop learning. And the most exciting part of seeing this progression is wondering what I'll be able to do in another six years. So bring on even more experiments and even more mistakes. As always, I would love to thank my patrons. For you guys, I have made a couple of 15 minute real time videos showing you how I created different elements of this piece. So I hope you'll enjoy those. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please leave me a like or a comment to tell me what you think. I'd love to hear about your art story and how you feel you're progressing as an artist. Um, but for now, if you're new here, why not hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys again real soon. Bye guys.